Now we're taking the 9.4, which is an equivalent interest rate. And an equivalent interest rate is a lot like our effective interest rate, but we're not converting into an annual rate. We're converting from one compounding period to another. So we have a formula that says our resulting interest rate, the one in the new compounding rate, is equal to 1 plus i to the m1 over m2. And this is the compounding rate, compounding frequency compared to the original rate. And this is the compounding frequency compared to the new rate minus 1. So looking at the special case of the effective interest rate, so we said F, this was equal to, and this was annual, so this is 1 plus I1 to the M1 over 1 minus 1. And so that just resulted in F is equal to 1 plus I1 to the M1 minus 1, and we had didn't, didn't worry about the ones at the time. So what we're doing is we're trying to figure out what rates are not just converting them to annual, but into a different compounding frequency. So we might say, what is the quarterly rate for 6% compounded monthly. Well, we'll set up a little table. We'll say I1 and I2. For I1, we had a rate of, well, we're calculating I. So I1 is the original amount, the one that we're specifying, because I2 is the one we're trying to find. So I1 is the original one, and this is 6% over 12, and our M was 12. I2, this is going to be some percent that we don't know over 4, so our M is 4. So using the formula, we'd say the frequency, or sorry, wouldn't be that, we would say I2, the new equivalent rate is equal to 1 plus I1, the new rate, or the, the existing rate, to the M1 over M2, the original compounding frequency compared to the new compounding frequency, minus 1. So the new rate is equal to 1 plus, in this example, this would be 0.5, point zero zero five because remember this is a decimal to the 12 over 4 because we're converting monthly into quarterly minus 1 and we get a value well instead of doing that we can also do what we did in our calculator before because we could say we're going to calculate a nominal rate and then back to an effective rate. So starting off this, we're going to say our original nominal rate, this was 6%. Our compoundings per year originally was 12 times per year. And we can compute the effective rate. Once we have an effective rate, so we're going to get an output value. Once we compute our effective rate, we can now change the compounding per year to be, in this case, 4. And we can compute the nominal rate, which is what that, the resulting rate will be. So now that we've seen that in our calculator, we'll do this and then check the original formula. So we said we have a six, sorry, second function, I convert. We had a six 
for a nominal rate. Our compoundings per year was 12. And we compute the effective rate to be 6.168. Now we convert our compoundings per year to be 4. And our nominal rate, we're going to compute that, and it's going to be our value of 6.03005. So we now have a couple of statements we can make where we can say 6% monthly is equivalent to 6.03005. One six seven eight annually, and it's also equivalent to six point zero three zero zero five percent quarterly. All the same rate all the same values, 6.6% monthly, 6.1678% annually, 6.03005% quarterly. They would all take the same amount of money to grow within a year. So that we'll take a look at question 14 on page 357. Here here is three year GIC investment. What nominal rate compounded monthly will put you in the same financial position as 5.5% compounded semi annually? So we're going to have some investment. We're going to move it in the future, and we don't know what this amount was or that amount was, but we know there was a rate of 5.5% compounded semi annually. So Using this, it was 5.5% semi-annually. And it's a three-year GIC, but it doesn't really matter too much. What we want to know is, instead of 5.5% semi-annually, we'd say to get for x to the same value of y, the same amount of growth, what amount of mon money would be compounded monthly. We can use the formula, but we're probably just going to use the calculator, so we'll do that. So 5.5% semi-annually. Second function, I convert. The nominal rate of 5.5%, enter. We're going to put this in as a semi-annual value. So the compoundings per year would be 2, enter. And we're going to compute the effective rate. So 5.5% semi-annually is 5.576% annually. We see it's getting slightly more growth. We can then change the compoundings per year to be 12 for monthly. And recalculate the nominal rate, which is 5.438%. Nominal of 5.5, compoundings per year of 2. We're going to compute the effective rate. Then we're going to change the compoundings per year to be 12. This is where we're starting the red stuff. And we're going to compute the nominal rate, and the results coming out is 5.438. So three equivalent rates, we could say 5.5% semi-annual. This is equal to 5.5756% annually. And it's equal to 5.4%. 
percent monthly equivalent rates.